Thank you, Chair Traeger. I want to start by asking a quick question uh, to uh, CSA President Mark Canizaro. Thank you for the great work you do for your members uh, who happen to be residents of our city. Community-based organizations that provide pre-kindergarten in my district pay their workers and administrators less than their counterparts at the Department of Education public schools, leading to retention problems. Should people doing the same work get paid a different amount? And how much would it cost to pay your members, the administrators at these locations, to actually have pay parity? And full disclosure, I will be stepping out of here to go to a rally on the steps of City Hall on this very issue. Right. Well, thank you, first of all, and thank you for your support, Councilmember Kalos, um, and for your support of our uh, workers in, in daycare centers, community based uh, organizations, and the support of this council. I know you passed a resolution very, uh, very recently to support pay parity. Um, and, and we certainly support our brothers and sisters outside uh, rallying. Uh, the, the, our members who work in daycare centers are as qualified as our principals and assistant principals in our Board of Education, Department of Education schools. So of course they deserve pay parity. Um, they are all 12 month employees. They often work incredibly long hours and they do the job with um, our youngest citizens and put them on the path to success. Most of our um, directors and assistant directors, as well as the teachers in those, are minority women, and they are severely underpaid. Um, so yes, of course they should be brought to parity, and it would cost for our members about $15 million annually. Thank you, I think that is a, a rounding error in the city budget. Uh, <laughs> to uh, Donald Nesbitt at DC 37. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, to the extent we can get the ACs in kitchens, I'm proud to work with you and uh, the public employees, uh, occupational safe and safety and health. Uh, so I just wanna know just uh, where we are in terms of that. And then to Randy Levine, I wanna thank you for your partnership in getting passage of a law saying that we should just have a, a GPS on school buses you can buy a smartphone for like 20 bucks now. You can put it on the buses. Uh, we just had Chancellor Carranza say that despite getting it done in Houston, he doesn't think he can get it done in six months. Six months to buy 1,400 phones and put them in the buses so parents know where their kids are. Uh, what are you gonna do about it? No, I, either one. The the I have AC, 16 seconds for my the, side. The AC first. Um, well, with the ACs, we're, we've been in conversation uh, with members of the council. We've also been in conversation. We have another local at DC 37, local um, 3005. That's the school construction authority members who have been in deep conversations with us. They want to assist because they call us while they're fixing certain things on schools. They see the conditions that are our members are experiencing in the kitchens. And so they said ACs may be a part of the solution, but there's some other things that we could work on in terms of ventilation. So they're working with us as well. So the conversations have to continue. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Kalos, for all of your work on the bill and now law to get GPS installed for on all of our buses for all of our students. We think it's going to make a big difference. In the past few weeks, I've learned a bit more about the current system that the DOE uses on some of its buses and think that the chancellor is right to think that we should be looking for a more effective system. So I am encouraged that we're not just sticking with what we have because we already have it, but are giving some thought to what we actually need. That said, we would like to partner with you to make sure that we move forward on this initiative as quickly as possible and would love to have it up and running.